So here it is, episode 10, part 2, Poughkeepsie Gulch. In the first episode, I showed you the shelf roads. I showed you how badass and scary they were at the same time. I showed you the amazing water features, the waterfalls, the river crossings that are all over this trail. They're beautiful. We went up to the top of Hurricane and California Pass and we looked down on the track that we just drove up from a bird's eye view. And then I showed you the beautiful coloring of Lake Como. But I never showed you the wall. And in this video, you're going to see the wall hardcore. I got a chance to watch others, every type of vehicle, try to make the wall. I had never seen anybody do the wall in real life. So I got a good opportunity to watch people and see what to do and what not to do. Yeah. So if you want to see what an FZJ80 with a supercharger does to the wall, you're going to want to sit back, relax, and check this out. All right, part two, here we go. You already got a really good idea of this entire area from part one. And if you haven't watched part one, there is a link in the upper right hand corner right now. So click on that, watch that, then watch this, or don't. We already saw Lake Como. I already brought you up to California Pass, but we've still got Cal we've still got Hurricane Pass. We've still got the entire road trip out of there and not to forget the wall. So once again, I'm at 12,390 feet, but this time I took Poughkeepsie Gulch, you know, the trail that's in the book that says difficult. I'm thinking, how difficult can it be? Dude, it's so difficult that I have to come back and do it again tomorrow because now that I've done the trail, I need to come back and set up cameras and drones and every other thing because this is sick. It's ridiculous. And I had to use front and rear lockers. So in part one, I left off at California Pass. I was at the very, very top and I have to do a three point turn, turn in order to get back down. And that's my playing field. I don't like doing three point, point turns at the peak of a mountain, but I did it. When you're in low gear in my truck, the low gear will easily try to override the brakes and you have to keep that in mind. And sometimes when you're up there, you may forget. At any rate, I headed down California Pass and when you get to the bottom, you can cross right over and take the other pass and head up to Hurricane Pass, which is exactly what I did. Why wouldn't you? You're right there. The view from either side are so completely different, it's crazy. Now, both of these passes, the shelf roads going up to Hurricane and California Pass, respectively, are narrow. They're obviously very steep, but there's nothing to worry about. You could make it up there in a station wagon, no big deal. And when you get to the top, they're both labeled, just like Imogene Pass, with a sign, elevation, etc., the views they afford you are just utterly amazing. Totally, completely otherworldly. You're at the top of the mountain looking around at other mountaintops and looking down into the valleys 
looking at other drivers, riders, etc., wildlife. It's it's just insane. There is nothing on earth like it. The days that I was up here, the weather was completely perfect every time. And it amazed me because every time I go up into up by NORAD or up by Divide, Colorado, every time I get up to elevation, it starts to rain. That didn't happen here. And yet there was plenty of water flowing every place. And when you look around, you would not be one bit surprised to see a NASA rover drive by because some of the terrain is so alien and it looks just like stuff that NASA's presented us as other planets and such. So it's just kind of crazy. It makes you think. Or maybe it doesn't. I don't know. But it's amazing. It's in 4K ultra, ultra high resolution. So watch it at the highest resolution you can and it will freak you out. Because some of the video I took looks realer than the actual things I took video of. I don't know how you explain that, but it is what it is. So after hitting the top of California Pass and Hurricane Pass, it was time to head back out. I had some unfinished business down in the extreme off-road section of Poughkeepsie Gulch, but it's very difficult to drive by Lake Como and not take more footage because it's just so beautiful. And I hope it shows up on whatever you're watching. But it's an amazing, amazing place. And it's phenomenal that the weather was beautiful every time. But it's time to roll out. Now, the trail I just took in from Poughkeepsie Gulch is entirely different going out. It's a long track. I'm heading down that road and into that valley and down. And it's just as difficult getting out as it is getting in. Now I've done all the tracks all the way around this area completely. I've gone all the way up all the way up that road, all the way up that road, all the way up there, and now it's time to head back down that road. Looks easier to do than it actually is. Now rolling out of here, the entire time you're still going over rocks, rock ledges, incredibly steep, twisty shelf roads with long drop-offs. And the entire time you're going down in elevation. If you just came in, you just climbed a thousand feet in elevation in less than a mile on the rock guard. So now you gotta go out. But this time around, you come to a fork in the road that actually allows you to go to an extreme off-road section of the trail. And they warn you, make sure your truck is modified, make sure you have a winch, etc., etc. Now, I'm not driving a brand new Jeep that is basically just a technologically advanced car 
with high clearance and automatic disconnects, this, that, and the other thing. I'm driving a 23-year-old, 7,000-pound, straight-axled, 6-inch lifted, supercharged machine. So it's a completely different experience. If you don't know how to drive this vehicle, something bad will happen. Do you see what I'm saying? Totally different than a Jeep or a brand new truck. So there is that. So right here, I tried as hard as I could to get on video what this turn looks like. You're going down, you're doing a 90 degree turn, almost a 180 actually, and it's straight down on your, on the driver's side. This turn sucks. It sucks coming in, it sucks going out. And I tried as hard as I could to show you this with the cameras. I've got six cameras running right now, and I still couldn't capture what it felt like. But if you can look at the truck leaning, you might have an idea. And if you've ever driven an 80 series or a lifted vehicle on turns like this, you know how I'm feeling. It ain't awesome. No joke whatsoever at all. So once again, we find ourselves at the fork in the road that says modified vehicles only, make sure you have a winch. Now I've been to the wall three separate times, but I travel solo and I've never actually seen anyone do the wall. But here's a very strange thing that happened on my way to the wall coming up the rock garden. Now in part one of this video, I literally was driving and randomly just happened to say, this. Now you might have noticed that I didn't skinny pedal it. I went through slowly because these rocks were incredibly jagged and I didn't want to risk one of my tires even though in seven years I have never taken out a Nitto mud grappler ever. Never even popped one off the rim. They're that good. Just telling you. So remember in part one of this exact episode I'm telling you how good the Nitto Mud Grapplers are while I just completed the rock mile. So remember that, because this happened. So I am officially back at the wall again. I arrived here yesterday late in the afternoon and proceeded to have to do a tire repair because I had a screw. After coming up the rock garden, I got a screw in my rear tire. See if I can do this really quick. I can't believe I caught a nail in the rock garden. That is just strange. A little bit breathless. Let that sit for a sec while I catch my breath, hit my vape. Okay. Come on. Well, I pulled it, I plugged it, I fixed it, 
So I drove on it all the way out of Poughkeepsie, all the way from Ure down to Ridgeway on 20, 20 PSI tires because I didn't bother to fill up again at 60. And it held. Woo! I am winded. I just did the rock garden, so I'm at 11.5 right now. And it kicks my ass. I'm old. I've been on the road for two years, so I'm not in the best of shape. I always said I'd stay, you know, stay in shape, but I never do. But I can't do part two till I do the wall. So after I plugged my tire yesterday, I was immediately <laughs> stung by a bee in the head right there. So I took those two omens as harbingers to come back another day. Well, it's another day. And it's already hot. I should have got here earlier. I was supposed to do a walk around of some young ladies in their Tacomas and they totally blew me off, which was cool. You're trying to build a YouTube channel or social media following when somebody that already has one offers to help you do that, show up. Because I had to get up early to be there. So, kind of strange, is what it is, whatever. So with that out of the way, I headed back into the staging area for the wall. The road going into the wall is a lot of fun. It's torn up, it's full of boulders, but it's completely passable. Now every place along this trail, there's basically a clean line where you don't have to go over boulders and go through huge ruts. Well, what fun would that be? You know what I'm saying? So there it was, there's the wall. And as you can see, I was totally alone. Nobody was here. So my plan was to set up several GoPros, plus the GoPros on the truck, plus two drones in the sky at the same time. So I'm gonna do the wall while flying two drones and keeping my eye on everything and not tipping the truck over. And I took a good long look at this and then suddenly some Toyotas I had passed caught up to me and then some razors and side-by-sides showed up so now I'm actually going to be able to watch somebody do the wall I've never done it before I do every really tough trail alone usually without a spotter and it always works out but let's see what happens here's what not to do on the wall I told you to do that the first time, homie. Just shut up. 
He's already out of it. Shut up, Spotty. Nice. Crunch. There you go. An extended cab pickup got stuck. I'm shot. I am fucking shot. I can't believe that. It's weird. Oh, cool. That's good. There you go. There you go. Put people around the unstable vehicle. Hey, look at that. Back up to that. Take it easy. Here's the tire back this way. It says TRD on it. I don't know why it's not doing the trail. So after watching a clinic on how not to climb the wall, I waited for everybody to finally leave, make their way off this staging area, and I set up my cameras. And I wanted to try the wall the way they were doing it, and then the way that I originally thought, which was go right around it to the right side or the passenger side and right over the top. But I wanted to see if I could make it through that ravine with my 37s. So I climbed all the way up. I set up two GoPros. I got a GoPro under the truck. I got a GoPro on the side of the truck. And I put not one, but two drones in the air. So I'm gonna do this obstacle without a spotter after watching the melee that just broke out in front of me. And I'm gonna keep control of two drones, or I'm gonna try. Now this is what happened when I kept taking the line that the spotter was telling everyone else to take so unsuccessfully. I wanted to see if I could do it. And also, you can tell from the footage, I'm not using front or rear lockers. I just pulled one of the wires out of my rear e-locker, so my rear was no good. And I was not going to use my front because I wasn't going to snap a burr field. Let me just interject real quick. I do have RCV Performance 300M axles, so I probably wouldn't snap them, but it's a good school of thought, so I didn't do it.
rear locker, all I got out of trying to take the line that the spotter was sending everybody up so unsuccessfully was some really kick-ass three-wheel Instagram pictures. So now, I went to my original game plan. And there you have it. Now the moral to this story is, these two Toyotas were not with the guy that was standing at the top spotting everyone. He unsuccessfully spotted a Razor that didn't make it. The white Toyota ahead of this one and this one. And yet they all thanked him and they don't, I'm not having some stranger spot me. Pick the line yourself and then do it or don't, one of the two. That's all there is to it, it's amazing. But you gotta admit, brute force and going right over the top was badass. Trying to crawl up just wasn't happening. I kept, there's too much dirt on there, I kept sliding into that ravine, but I got some kick-ass Instagram pictures and that's what it's all about at the end of the day, correct? At any rate, the trail's not over yet. Once you get past this, Poughkeepsie still starts kicking your ass. It's no joke. The trail ain't over yet. It ain't just the wall. There's more. Look at me. <laughs> marching up a wall now sadly i didn't get any good drone footage of these climbs but i'll tell you these climbs were just as bad as the wall for the most part because of where they're located and because of the jagged rocks and deep ruts it's passable but i'll tell you what one of them stopped me right in my tracks and it took a bit of thinking before i decided to proceed forward because there was a tip over this is it right here. The huge rut to the right hand side. Yep, stop me right in my tracks like that at any rate. Okay, so with the wall behind us and the extreme off-road trail behind us, we're heading back out. Now back out is where I got some really good footage of the trail so you can see what it looks like for real. And again, we're still not out of the woods yet. I still have to go down the rock garden. I still have to go on the shelf roads, etc. But I managed to get some really beautiful footage so you should enjoy that if you enjoy the footage part of the deal. And I also got some epic footage of the shelf road going out because it was late and there weren't very many people left around, if at all. Now, right before I got to the climb over boulders next to a stream portion of the trail, which is before the rock garden, I stopped and got some footage of this marmot, who looked like he stopped and got some footage of me as well. Because he was far away. I was zoomed in on him, but they're all over the place at 11,000 and up, I've noticed. And they're big, and they walk funny, and they don't make very much noise. But there's a lot of them. So, there is that. Now you know why your jacket's named that. And I also caught some footage of a moose or two. You see this rather benign bush? Well, right behind it is probably the biggest moose I've ever seen. And I've seen dozens of moose. And usually when you see a large female like that, not too far away at this time of year, you'll see one of her foals or colts 
or baby moose, we'll call it that. And sure enough, maybe 50 yards away, there was the baby and the mother came over and joined him rather quickly once I started observing. So I made sure I was a good distance away. She kept an eye on me but didn't charge. So that was awesome. So I continued to head out. So once again, this is the boulder crawl that I did on the way in and I'm doing it on the way out. And I wanted to show you how many cameras I had set up on the vehicle just to get this particular shot. Just if you make your own overland videos and you want to do it yourself, this is what you need. Camera one, I just showed you. This is camera two, obviously. Now, if you do this trail, this is a bypass. You don't have to do these rocks. I do it because why wouldn't you? What are you here for? You see what I'm saying? I'm not worried about scratching my vehicle or scratching a sticker from my sponsor, etc. Some people are. I am not. If you're going to do it, do it. Don't just decorate your vehicle so that it looks cool for Instagram posts. If you built it, run it. Or don't. Okay, now we are at the beginning of the rock garden, going down. We're going to go down 1,000 feet in elevation over about three quarter to a mile of road. And it is ugly. No two ways about it. You can't sugarcoat it. It puts your suspension to the test and your tires big time. This is probably one of the more picturesque parts of the entire gulch, in my opinion. But do not be fooled. Drop your truck into four-wheel low and creep down the rock garden because it's amazing how many people stand in the middle of this, stop their enduro bikes and lay them over in the middle of this, or act like you're not coming down an incredibly steep descent on incredibly precarious substrate. These rocks do not give your tires any grip.
So if you need a break from embracing the suck going down the rock garden, keep an eye out because you'll see abandoned mines and very cool things in the mountainsides, just like you would on any other kick-ass trail in Colorado. This one is no different whatsoever at all. But there's so many distractions, meaning unstable shelves, rocks, etc. You might miss them, so try not to. You're basically home free when you come to the waterfall on your right hand side and you're driving down the stream. You've done it. You're out of there. You did the wall. You did everything. But if you keep a really good eye out, you'll notice that there's lots of really technical, difficult things to do that aren't on the main trail. Now, I've been on a lot of trails in the United States of America, and Poughkeepsie Gulch offers pretty much everything. The reason I say it's the scariest trail is when you've never done it before and you're heading in, especially like I did alone, those climbs that are so incredibly steep that turn and then on the other side you cannot see at all, that is scary, period. But, again, one of the most enjoyable trails ever. And if you want to flip your truck over, you can do it here too, because people do. And if you're inclined to pay attention to side trails and such, there's lots of really awesome little challenges, like this off camber, uphill, three foot shelf that drops into a stream. I drove by this six times and didn't notice it till the last trip. And going in, it was awesome. The angle, etc., the drop off, the ability to damage your vehicle is all there. Everything we look for in a crawling overland situation, don't you think? But it's without a doubt doable. But now the toilet right next to the Poughkeepsie Gulch gate might make a little more sense. You see what I'm saying? Now, in, after that entire trail, you still have the shelf road. And the shelf road still has plenty of things that can make you pucker. Straight up. When you're climbing over rocks and the truck swaying side to side and you're looking straight over the side of a cliff, yeah, you'd be smart to be cautious. And let's not forget, after you get off the shelf, you still have to do Mineral Creek Road, which is considered a red trail. It's easy enough, I mean, no big deal at all. But pay attention. The scenery in this particular valley is amazing. The mountains on the, on the uh, driver's side and the shelf that you're actually driving under are absolutely epic. I believe I got some good shots of it, I hope. I'll tell you what, I could really use a butler because managing all my cameras and the vehicle, etc., it can get bit it can be a bit much and I've lost some really good footage, which is why I always go back in. So that kind of sucks, but no it doesn't. I love it. It is what it is. It's amazing that we're able to still use these things. I'll tell you what, carpe diem, because the world will change in the blink of an eye. We've seen it happen before and it will happen again. Just know that, or don't. So that's episode 10, part 1 and part 2. If you didn't see part 1, a link will be above or in the description box below. 
I love doing this stuff, and hopefully I brought it to those who can no longer do this to the best of my ability. I tried. This place is beautiful, and sadly, looking at four out of ten trees dying, very, very minimal wildlife running around like it used to be, it's kind of heartbreaking, but I'll tell you what, the answer, and this is this is a response to one of my subscribers or a commenter, the answer is not Joe Biden or the left, white, left, right wing paradigm that is Republican Democrat. Those guys are all in the same boat and you should be aware of that or not. It is what it is. If you enjoyed this video, make sure you hit that like, share, and subscribe. Leave a comment below, and I will try to return the favor. Say stupid things, you will win stupid prizes. I am out.